Good morning, folks. We might have an inconsistency. So yesterday we saw the CME impact, dense but slow. However, the speed ramped up all day, almost to 500 kilometers per second, a fair elevation. And our shield appeared to keep out a good bit of the plasma from being absorbed in the atmosphere, but boy did it pay a price. And this is somewhat odd. This CME impact was significant on the 2014 scale as the sun heads for grand minimum, but the severity of the burst cannot match what we've seen in the past, and a level 2 storm at KP6 was certainly not expected. I'll say it if no one else will. Could this be attributed to the diminishing magnetosphere strength? The X-ray flux shows solar flaring to be low. Sunspots on the disk are mostly fading and decaying, but the incoming northern groups have some potential. The lead grouping appears to have mixing potential up top, but the spots are small and need to develop. Meanwhile, the trailing group appears to have both polarities scattered about, but the umbras are spread a bit much for them to really mix magnetically. Here are the coronal holes. Dark patches north and south. The north lost a good bit of force overnight, but the south remains fairly strong. All in all, it was a calm day on our star. The story was here on Earth with the magnetic storm. We got some surface volatility, but nothing really erupting as of now. In fact, plasma rain falling back towards the star catches my eye most of all. While Iran kept aftershocking, the bigger quakes took a day off. However, we had unusual tremors southwest of Africa and in Spain. Don't often see tremors in those areas. Top news articles begin with a tip of the hat to life potential on Mars. The full paper is open access. We've also got an interesting story about a quake-built land formation being eroded astonishingly quickly. And as always, around the 20th, the previous month's global climate report is out, highlighting top weather news worldwide for July, including the low Arctic ice, the fourth lowest Arctic ice total on record. We're expected to miss breaking that record by more than 1.5 million square miles, however. Meanwhile, the Antarctic was definitively at the high ice mark for July in all the satellite record. The dotted 2013 line set many records last year, and this year we will likely see another all-time broken high ice record down south. Global temperatures really showing those climate extremes swinging back and forth with both heat and cold got the precipitation anomalies as well, flooding and drought. Space weather impact ramped the Uyen factors and we've got two named storms in the Pacific. The interesting bit is Karina slated to head back north on a collision course with newly formed Lowell. Something to watch there, along with new formation potential in the Atlantic. So the heat and moisture flow splitting up through the states is fairly obvious. So are tonight's storm zones which do extend into Canada as well eyes open. The story in Europe didn't change much, minor low to the south, and the big low up north, causing tremendous amounts of rainfall in this area. Lighter day down under, two highs over Australia, and the low over New Zealand has its convergence tail offshore to the east, leaving few severe watch areas tonight. Great to see you last night, Paul. We added a stop tonight about an hour outside of Billings. Check out observatoryproject.com and come see us on the road. We've got the rest of the world's thunderstorm watches followed by shots of our star to close. It's 6.20 a.m. Eastern Time, 4.20 a.m. Local Time. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.